Hello, I'm Clifton Slay from Hot Life Venture Trek and Gone Jeepin. We are here with Alan Clausen from Yankum Rope. He's got some new and unique products that we're going to be putting together to do some different types of winching systems. Absolutely. And so what we're going to do is, you don't have to explain them now, we're just going to go set them up and then we'll go through them as we go. Sounds great. Free spool. So in the progression of seeing all the multiple ways we can use this equipment, we're going to start with the most basic, which is just a single line, one-to-one -one pull directly to the winch using the Yankum equipment. So in most cases, all you need is a one-to-one -one just coming right off the winch. But there are some special use cases where a uh, one-to-one -one pulling ratio is a little bit too much work either for the winch um, or due to the conditions of just being too stuck. That's good enough. In most use cases, a one-to-one -one pulling ratio. So this is this is one-to-one. -one. There's one line coming off the winch mm -hmm. um, is all you need. Uh, but you might find yourself uh, up in the upper end of the working load limit of your winch line, of your winch. And so, yes, with a snatch ring or, or, or a winch ring or a snatch block of any kind, you know, yes, you can pull a lot harder, but it also is reducing the wear and the load on your equipment. Because we are doing, so we're gonna, I'm gonna make up a number. I'm gonna say we're, we're pulling a thousand pounds. Yeah. And this is a the direct, it's, the drag is thousand, thousand, but if we doubled it, it'd be 500, 500. Yep, exactly. Okay. And so it, it's just going to reduce the load on, uh, on all the equipment, especially that winch. So we're gonna now reduce this from a one-to-one -to, -one to a two-to-one. Mm -hmm. Now put the first winch ring out here on the anchor point. And here's what's different about our winch line or our winch rings versus everybody else is we go through the hole first. What that does is that may make sure that your winch line won't fall out of the groove or that your winch ring will fall out and then your winch line is then damaging your soft shackle. So Alan, you were talking about making sure going through this hole or that hole to make sure the winch line doesn't come through here. Now I've of course used the original type of snatch box, all kinds of yep. steel. Yep. And I don't remember that happening. Of course, they're sort of a clamshell to yep. prevent itself um, retaining in some ways. Exactly. So is that a problem with synthetic ropes or is it coming out of the group? Yeah, so a, lo a lot of times you'll see some of the one of some of the rings, they'll go ring first, they'll go through the groove first. Now, if you start to get traction with your Jeep and then the winch line drops. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you'll have a problem where the, the where the snatch block will fall out. Um, oh, I see. And now your winch line to snatch block. And the problem is, is if you're if you get a little bit of traction, then you slide back, but you've lost your snatch block. Now you're in trouble. Because so, it's because it's under tension. Because it's under tension. And even if you well, like, okay, well, let's just reverse the winch. Well, you're still under a lot of load on mm -hmm. that soft shackle. So that's why we suggest you need to go through the hole first because then it will maintain. Now this, now I want to yep. bring up another thing too. We have a fair lead for you for, for the Jeep. Yeah, I know and, that. and that fair lead is designed to go with a thimbleless eye. Don't use this as the actual, what you're connecting mm -hmm. to. Make sure that you're replacing the hook with a soft shackle. So even if a hook, so you, you have hook recovery points on the front of your Jeep, Put the soft shackle on the hook, not the winch line, because then you're then you're putting the focus of damage or wear on the soft shackle, not on your winch line. So if cheap, we can cheaper to replace. Yep. If we can if we can protect your winch line, if we can you know take out any abrasion of any kind on the winch line and put that on here, this is easier to swap. This is easier to replace. It's also got a larger radius. So so Alan, is this? And I understand all that. Yep. <clears throat> Is the breaking, is, are these the same? Is this an equal piece? So it, it is. yeah, you have a 7 16 winch line here and you have a 7 16 soft shackle here, but this has a higher breaking strength because it's, it's double legged. Got it. You've got two lines in there. So this is what you would want to put on your recovery point, just like so. Here's my hook. So there's your hook. Yep. There's got your it. hard shackle, your, tow, your recovery point. The transition right now 
is between the older bumpers that have the hard edges, which aren't represented here, but these have the soft edges that can actually accept the, the soft shackles and the rope, but can these still, can you still put a bow shackle in here okay? No, you don't okay. want to put a bow shackle in there. This is soft shackle only. So this is 100% synthetics. And is this because this is billet aluminum and that's in that steel, steel or forge yep. or something like that? Yep, exactly. And is it a hardness thing where it'll, where it'll tear this up? Yep. Yeah, and, and it's just going to prolong the life of this. You never want to put a steel cable through this either. Mm -hmm. You will you will cut this. Um, this is a synthetic only. Like I said, we're trying to get as much get rid of as much steel as possible. I mean, if we could make this out of synthetic, we would. But you have to have you have to have a hard enough uh, device for the switch line to slide through. So, Alan, in a pinch, if I run a steel cable on here, it would just destroy it, but it would work. Uh, it it might work once. Okay. <laughs> but we highly, we, I would say no, don't use it. Well, and I do know, I, sometimes I ask questions I already know the answers to, of course, yeah. but I do know that if I put steel cable on here with the offset eye, uh -huh. that the, it would want to probably try to drag it. And it would still spin. And it would still spin and mm -hmm. it would cause some resistance, yep. which would cause more load on the system and everything else. Right. And these snatch blocks, um, we, you know, like I said, we call it the offset winch ring. It has an offset center hole because we are trying to lock it in place, but we're not we're not limiting it to that. If it needs to spin, it can, and it will. Okay. All right, let's put this in. Okay, Alan, so we're gonna build the two to one. Yep. But I have to say, I thought we would be go. I just said, thought we would be going through this outside. Yep. Because of the longer radius. Right, we're gonna go through, radius. we're gonna go through the hole. And like I said, these winch rings are gonna be, um, these are primarily gonna be used for the smaller Jeeps, the side-by-sides and the smaller diameter winch lines. Mm -hmm. And so we are we are upgrading these to a larger width, so you're gonna have a much larger radius to travel through in the hole. Oh, I got it, so around now, here, yep. that's what you're talking about. Yep, so going through the hole first gives you the advantage of making sure that this snatch block, that this winch ring is not going to fall out of the winch yeah. line. It's, this is going to guarantee protection of your um, mm -hmm. of your soft shackle. And I remember you referencing that, but I have to tell you, I wasn't exactly sure because I still had envisioned it going around here, so yep. I didn't. We are going to use on. the groove. This groove is designed for the winch line to, to slide through, but that's when we reach a three to one pulling ratio. Okay, well, let's finish the two to one. Okay. And how do you suggest we connect it? So on this bumper, it just depends on where your recovery points. You were suggesting earlier, right yeah, here. Yeah, it's a closed, it's untraditional, but it's closed. We're gonna do that for this demonstration today. We always suggest to put your, either on the recovery point or on the winch line, you have one of those very close to the base of the knot. So what this does is it keeps all of the functionality of this, the soft shackle and the winch line really close. It's easy to access. And you also have a larger radius for your winch line doing what the thimble used to oh, do. Oh, I see, because it's got the, the double Mm -hmm. the double over what yep. did you call it yeah so you've got two legs there mm. but so you've got the two outer and then you've got the two inner so you have a much larger radius for your winch line better preserving your winch line nice okay so what is the if i look at it is the next step just to tighten it up yep next step is to tighten it up and utilize that two to one okay so alan what our real goal here with the two to one i know we're showing the different capabilities of the equipment right but we are reducing the load mm -hmm. in half yep. of each side. Yep. Correct. And we're so we're increasing mechanical advantage for the winch. The winch is not working as well because we got more rope out. Mm -hmm. Anything else to add to that? It's just going to reduce the load on all of your equipment. Okay. And it's going to make it last longer. Well, let's tighten it up and mm -hmm. see how that winch ring works. Sounds good. Okay. All right, so I've got the the rope traveling through here as, as you designed it. Yep. Well, I can see a lot of a lot of load on here. Um, is this does the winch ring itself have any kind of special coating or anything like that that's anti abrasive or it, reduces friction? Yes, it does. It's anodized, and that anodized coating makes the surface of the aluminum a lot harder, mm -hmm. and it also reduces the coefficient. Now, is there a a time when there's so much pressure on here? that you would actually pull that coating off, or is that? We haven't seen that happen yet. Okay. And so, sure, eventually that could happen, but not unless you've got a lot of abrasives in there. Mm -hmm. 
all we've seen so far is that it just polishes it. Yeah, and I'm sure, and it's a no-no, of course, but if you had a lot of dirt, sand, then it impregnated into the rope. Yep. Sure. We're, we're out here off-roading in the dirt, so it's going to get dirt in it. <laughs> hey, goodness, that would be fun. No. <laughs> Okay. All right, well, let's. Uh, I guess our next stage of this is to go to a four to one. Am I correct? No, or so we're gonna go to, to one. we're gonna go to a three to one. So if you know that all you need is a two to one, this is how you're gonna do it. Um, now, if you know in advance that you're going to go to a three to one and you only have one recovery point, mm -hmm. then you do start in the groove first because okay. now you can use the hole as the recovery point for the end of the winch line because okay. you have nowhere else to put it unless you have a tree or a rock or, or another thing to use. If you don't, in this situation, that's that's what's beautiful about these rings is that there's versatility. We've got our original anchor down here on the pull pal. Yep. That was our two to one. We've come up here with the winch ring and we are gonna come through this and go back and that's gonna give us three to one. Correct. Okay, so my question is, are, are we still going through the center or are we going on the outside? So on this one, on the Jeep, we're gonna go through the center. Okay. But on this one, we have to re-rig it. If you know that you're going to go to a three to one pulling ratio mm -hmm. and you have no other option for a recovery point, you can use the winch ring. But you have to go through the outside first in order to utilize that hole as the last anchor point or for another recovery point. Okay, and I th I'll probably be able to visualize it better than the actual doing of it. Yep. Um, and again, we are going here because that sort of safeties it, keeps it from jumping off and potentially coming down in here and biting into the Correct. top shackle. Okay, all right, let's build it. Show me how we're gonna re-rig this to a three to one. Okay, so if you're gonna do a three to one, you know that you're gonna be doing this, then you would set this up a little different than we did. So we want to pull the line out and we're gonna go through the groove then to the groove on the winch line, or on the other, or to the hole on the other winch screen, and then we're gonna use the hole as the recovery point on the end of your winch line. Okay. Okay. And so we're gonna pull this system through here? Yep. Okay. Oh. All right, I'll hand you this, okay. this end so you can do it. All right, perfect. And if you know where your winch line is, it, the, the best way to do it is you've got the drum, and you've got your recovery point on the other side. Mm -hmm. So make sure that you've got your drum and then you've got your recovery point on your winch ring. So are we in the wrong direction right now? We're going the correct direction. Okay. And so coming back, so I'm on the correct side of the rope. Yep. We are going to feed it through the eye. Correct. Make sure my monk fist is right there. I've got, it's gonna self regulate. I'm gonna come on back. So we've got this in, Alan. Now the way that I understand it is we are going to run the soft shackle through the center because we're already utilizing the outside and then it's gonna connect right here in the middle? Correct, yeah. Now we have, we can use this as the recovery point because we have no other options. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Okay, there you go. Okay. What we'll do is we'll put the soft shackle through the winch line right up to that monkey fist. And then we'll put this in the ring, just like so, and put some load on it. Yeah, that's cool how we have one unit here. Because if I were to have to double up on the pull pal, I could see that the two soft shackles would be on top of each other mm -hmm. and actually putting like a pinch. Yeah. Like you, the bottom one, the top one would be pinching the top, the bottom, I'm sorry, the top one would be pinching the bottom one. Mm -hmm. It might be a failure. And in synthetics, you really want to avoid pinching, as you know. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go check the rigging on the Jeep, and we'll winch it in and see how it works. Sounds good. So, Alan, I see that it's kind of a busy, it's kind of busy down there. Yep. It seems like we're crossing the streams. Yep. But does this need to be flipped? Yeah, we definitely don't want to cross the streams. Okay. So, that's right. The cool thing about a soft shackle in this wintering setup is very easy to, to flip that. Okay. So all we gotta do is take the soft shackle off, just like so. Let's make sure that we flipped it the correct way, that we're not twisting the ropes together. Everything looks good. Now we'll reconnect this to the bumper. Now we're good to go. Okay, so we'll put, we'll put a little tension on here so we can see it. Yep. And 
say that we didn't notice that. Say that we had this, the streams crossed and we had the rope sort of abrasing itself. Um, I'm going to ask the obvious, is this just a, a break point? It's going to cause more heat. What's the You're going to be making weird music out in the middle of nowhere. So it, it's funny, you'll, you'll start to get a harmonic in the, in the winch lines, which is bad. Um, you really don't want those rubbing against each other, as you know. Alan, can you simulate that sound for us? <laughs> uh, let me channel. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right, so let's start at the point of origin, which is the Jeep. So I follow this line coming down. I go through the winch ring. Yep. Coming back. I'm coming through the inside of the winch ring, that way it safeties itself. And then I didn't, we didn't cross the streams, or at least we fixed it. Go all the way back down. I go back to a soft shackle to the center of the ring. And as I look at it, it looks safe, looks good. I think we're ready to winch. Sure looks good, doesn't it? Yeah, it looks good. Nice and smooth. Wouldn't cross itself over. Everything looks great. Really, for most recovery situations, one to one's good with enough rope out. Yep. Two to one. Three to one is when you're really getting some serious mechanical advantage, but we're getting really close without an extension, that kind of thing. And we're not ready to do that, but is this the limit of the equipment or can we do some, can we go one step farther? We can go two steps farther if we okay. wanted to. So what we're gonna do today is just show a four to one and that will get you out of any, really any situation you can think of. Well, I'm sorry, I do have two pull fouls, but I didn't know we were gonna get that crazy, but it's really <laughs> cool to know that we could. Yep. Um, and especially if we were had a system where we had another vehicle or a tree or a rock that was adequate, that we could use that in conjunction with the pull pal as well. But let's work with what we've got. Let's build a four to one. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I yep. do and I, I have one other point too. When you start getting into this kind of a ratio, yes, you are reducing a lot of load on all of your equipment. Mm -hmm. and you're making know, it easier. I know where you're going. <laughs> but you mm -hmm. can also put a little bit more gap in your door jams, or tear your axle off, or rip your bumper off. This this really does greatly increase your pulling force. Yeah, and I think it, it's a, a really good conversation because recovery is is sort of a, a popular topic right now. Like I have never seen it, yeah. even though I've been recovering for over 30 years. But just because you can make elaborate systems doesn't, mean doesn't you make it better. And then you start really looking at where your weak points are in your system and is it necessary? Yes. So, and you can, obviously you can see with this, we have a very short system here. Um, but that's good for the camera angle. Yeah. Keep it short. Keep it, it does small. show it, but the, 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 the exotic systems that we're talking about can really work with, um, with rope extensions and just additional equipment that we're not, that we're not really displaying today. Yeah, correct. We can do uh, winch extensions with this setup, especially now that we've pulled the thimble out. We have a winch extension that uh, unions very well on the end of this winch line. And what's great about it is that with the new winch rings, you can pull that union through the winch rings. Oh, just because the eye is big enough? Exactly. Okay. The eye is big enough, the groove is big enough. Before, if you had a hook or a hard shackle or a soft shackle on the end of your winch line, or, or unioning, you know, uh, taking the end of your winch extension in your winch line, um, you would have to re-rig all of the snatch blocks. Well, now with that union, with that, mm -hmm. with what we do there, you can pull that through these snatch blocks. Well, let's do it. I do actually have an extension. Okay. If it's helpful to build this system. Sure. And um, and you can show us how we put, how you would recommend that we add that extension into the system. Correct. Okay. Cool. All we need to do is just put the end of the winch line on the end of your winch extension and we're good to go. What we're gonna do is we're gonna tie that. We're gonna run this through and it's really quick. You get your lark's head. What we're going to do is we're going to flip it into a square knot and then this union will pass through everything. Now, you do have a reduction in strength of about 10% at the knot, but you have a double leg, which is, this is still significantly stronger than the single leg of your winch line. Does it make a difference, Alan, or should we go up, should we go down? I'd go yeah. through the bottom, okay. up to the top. And I flipped this to make it easier. And that should pass right through like that. So 
in in the sake of demonstration, we can put it to the other recovery point on on your bumper. Mm -hmm. But if we didn't have that, we could re-rig this, go through the groove, then through the hole. And well, we could go through the groove on this, and then as we did on that ring over there, use it as the anchor. We could use that as the anchor. Okay. But in and also too in, in when we get to this much reduction, we need to spread the load. I, I actually like not doing it. I'm sure this is all strong, but yep. why not use a second connection point? As long as we're not crossing the streams here, we should be in good shape. Hold the back. Okay, hold on, we got something going on. So as we started to tighten up, I saw that the whole system was starting to bind mm -hmm. and we noticed that this had actually fallen out. So. The correction, we're gonna come down here with the unloaded and get it back in the groove. The cautionary tail air is as until you get some load on there to kind of watch your junctions and make sure that doesn't happen. Yep, there's a, there's a couple of different rings that are out there. All of them will suffer from the same thing. You gotta make sure that everything stays in its groove and uh, stays in its place. <sighs> So let's, Alan, let's just look at it before we actually put real tension on it. Is this okay? I know we're we're not really rubbing. You're not touching, so you're all right. Okay. Now, if you if it does get to a point where they are touching, now you might need to adjust the ring, turn it 90 degrees. Mm -hmm. If you have another, now with a soft shackle, you can only do 180 degrees, but if you had another soft shackle, you could daisy chain them and then you would have oh, the adjustment of 90 degrees. Yeah, because it would clock it. Yep. Differently. Okay. Yeah, it all looks good. This is a lot. This is a lot of rope out. Like I said, we could do, we could we could do some damage if we wanted. Oh, for sure. But what we're gonna do is go ahead and pull it forward and just see it all working. All right, Shane, you ready? Yeah. So Alan looks super clean, and I don't see anything. Bound. I mean, we've crossed a little bit, but they're actually not contacting. Yep, there's there's daylight between the two of them. You're okay. Mm. All right. Proceed forward. Well, Alan, thank you for your time today. Yeah. Uh, with the, I would say almost a refocus on recovery in the last couple of years for many, many cultural reasons. Uh -huh. This seems to be another hyper focus. We're seeing a lot of evolution and de evolution, I would say, not represented today, but in recovery. So it's cool to see your take on it. Yeah. And uh, hopefully we'll see some new things from you in the future. Absolutely. Our, we, we're just trying to do is, is to create the best, safest options in the industry. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Let's tear down this rig and...